Good news, AI Tutor is now available for GCSE Maths. So we're gonna celebrate. I'm gonna be starting a new YouTube series where I'm gonna be grabbing the hardest questions that AI Tutor has to offer for GCSE Maths, and I'm gonna be going through them for you here. So if you're an A-level student, we have done it for A-level two. That's called disgusting A-level maths questions because you know, it's one step above. But for GCSE, we'll stick with difficult. So for today, what I've done is I've grabbed a pretty nasty probability question. So I'm going to get it on the whiteboard now and we're going to have a bit of a talk about it. So the question says that there are four black and X purple counters in a bag. If two counters are removed from the bag without being replaced, the probability of selecting two black counters is one sixth. Find the value of X. Right. Why is this a difficult question? Let me put it to you this way. Imagine the question said this, you know, there are four black counters and, I don't know, let's say 10 purple counters. Find me some probability. Now, this wouldn't be the easiest question in the world by no means, but I don't think many students would have a great amount of difficulty doing it because it's what they're used to learning. Spoiler alert, we would use a tree diagram here. So we'd kind of, you know, draw out the different branches of the trees, maybe do a bit of and or all or something like that, given that we know how many counters are in each bag and we would work out the probability. So we would have these two bits of information, get the probability from it. It's not quite that way in this case though, is it? Here, we have the four black counters. We don't know how many purple counters there are. And then we're actually given the probability. So this may lead you to believe that we might have to kind of go the other way. We might have to do some different bit of maths because there's no way I could, you know, draw out this tree diagram or work out anything if I don't know how many purple counters there are in the bag. But this is where algebra comes in. What algebra says is it just says, you know what? Let's pretend we do know how many purple counters there are. Who cares that I don't know? Let's pretend we do. Why don't we just call it X and then I'm gonna do exactly the same maths as I would have done in this easier example, but it's just gonna have some X's in it instead of numbers, but that's fine. That's why algebra exists. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, you know what, let's imagine we're trying to work out this probability. Once I work it out, I'm gonna have X's in it, and then I'm gonna say, well, that's equal to one six. We then get an equation out of it and solve X. So what's my hand about? Let's actually read through the question again and talk about it. Okay, so we're gonna be using a tree diagram here because it's talking about two counters being removed. So what we're gonna to need to do is work out the different possibilities. So I remove a counter and then I remove another counter. So for the first counter, there are two possibilities. It could be black or it could be purple. Okay, so what is the probability of picking a black counter? Well, in the case where we knew how many purples and we knew how many blacks, we would say, okay, well, there are gonna be four black counters and then divide that by the total amount of counters. So if purple was 10, we would say four plus 10 over 14. In this case, we just say, well, you know what? Let's pretend we do know the value of purple, it's X. So if we did know this value, what I would do is I would do four, the amount of black counters, plus X, the amount of purple counters. So the probability of picking a black is four divided by four plus X. Fantastic. Probability of picking a purple, well, how many purples are there? There are X, and then divided by the total, which is four plus X. Fantastic. And then what would happen on the second? So for the second, what is the probability of getting a black? So given that on the first one we picked a black counter, how many black counters would be left? Remember, they are not being replaced here. So there would only be three left. And then the total amount of counters, well, there would be one less. So instead of four plus X, there would be three plus X. Okay, so what would be the chance of getting a purple counter? Well, there would still be X purples left in there because I picked up a black on the first one, so this would be x over three plus x. Now, interestingly, at this point, I technically don't need to finish off this tree diagram, but I am gonna do it for you here. So, if we took a purple on the first one, how many purples 
Well, how many blacks would be left? Because that's the one we're doing on top. There would still be four. Again, the total now would be three plus X either way. How many purples? Well, there would be, there was X at the start. Now there would be X minus one left. Divided by three plus X. So just at this point, look at what I've done. If you're just used to doing this when you know the numbers, the first time you see this, it's going to confuse you because you're going to say, well, there's no way I can work out probabilities or anything if I don't know how many counters were in the bag. But this is what algebra says you can do. It basically just says, I don't care what information I have. As long as I have some bits of information somewhere, I can then get an equation and work things out. So it's super, super useful in all areas of maths. And if you get this technique down now, make your GCSE a lot easier. Okay, so let's now give another read of the question. It says, if two counters are removed without being replaced, the probability of selecting two black counters is one sixth. So I'm going to rephrase that. I'm going to say, imagine we were asked to work out the probability of picking two black counters. What would we do? Well, we would look at the lines of the tree diagram that correspond to picking two black counters. So I want to pick a black counter and another black counter. So we're going to use the and rule here. And what that says is if I want the probability of something and something else happening, I multiply the probabilities. In other words, I would do whatever number I get here, which in this case is 4 over 4 plus x. I would then multiply it by whatever number we have here. And I would, in this case, it's 3 over 3 plus x. So imagine that you know, I had the amount of purples and there was no algebra here. The question would go something like this. I don't know, the probability of picking a black is 1 over 2, and then the probability of picking another black is, I don't know, 5 over 11, whatever. I would then just work out the probability, and then I would say, cool, I'm done. You know, in this case, I would say, fantastic, 5 over 22, final answer. And look at what we're doing here. In this case, we actually know the final answer, but we don't know the start. But that's fine because we can make an equation out of it. So in this case, we're actually told that this probability is one over six. So the unknown's just in a different place, isn't it? So in other words, I'm gonna forget about all of this because that is not relevant. And now look, I've got an equation. So as long as I know my algebra, <coughs> I really need to sneeze. As long as I know my algebra, then I can just solve this. Okay, so how are we gonna solve this? It's usually a good idea to try and get rid of all these fractions and these equations, especially if I have an x down at the bottom. I'm never going to really be able to solve for x if it's kind of stuck in a denominator. So I'm going to one by one get rid of every single one of these fractions and then hopefully I get an okay equation come out of it. So I'm going to multiply everything by 4 plus x here. So what's going to happen is on the left hand side, that's just going to cancel out this 4 plus x on the bottom of this. So I'm going to get 4 multiplied by 3 over 3 plus x. Note that I don't need to multiply this by 4 plus x as well, because these are all in one term. So the fact that I've cancelled it there means I've already multiplied all of this by 4 plus x. And then here I will get 1 over 6 multiplied by 4 plus x. Remember the bracket there because it's multiplying everything. Okay, let's now do the same with the 3 plus x. So I'm going to have 4 times 3 equals 1 over 6 times 4 plus x times 3 plus x. Cool, okay. So 4 times 3 is 12. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by 6. So that's going to get rid of the 1 6 here, and then I'm going to multiply this by 6 here. And on the right-hand side, I've got 4 plus x multiplied by 3 plus x. So what now? Well, usually when we have kind of brackets like this, when they're factorized, sometimes we like to keep it in that form because it's quite nice. Well, we only like to keep it in that form when there's a zero on the other side. When I have 12 times six on the other side, this is no use to me. So I'm gonna unfortunately need to multiply these out. So we're gonna use the FOIL method. And what that means is the first thing we do is the first term from each bracket. So that's gonna be, 4 multiplied by 3, which is 12. Then the outer terms from each bracket. So that's going to be the 4 multiplied by the x. So that's going to be plus 4x. Then the inner term, so f o i, 
So the inner from each bracket, which is going to be x times 3, which is 3x. And then the last foiled. <laughs> I know, right? Um, then the last term from each bracket. So that's going to be x times x, which is x squared. So can I simplify this at all? I believe I can, because 4x plus 3x is 7x. So I get 12 plus 7x plus x squared. And what is going on on the left? Well, I've got 12 times 6, which is 72. So what I'm now going to do is try and get this all onto one side. So taking 72 away from both sides, I'm going to get what? 0 equals 12 minus 72, which is minus 60, and then the plus 7x plus x squared. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I want to just... I'm going to write all of this on this side. So x squared plus 7x minus 60. The reason I've written it in this... So I've not done anything mathematically here. I've just swapped these terms around and I've literally just swapped the left and the right side. Just because it looks nicer. And most of you should now be familiar with what this is. This is a quadratic equation. So, there are a few ways of solving quadratic equations. We can factorise, we can complete the square, or we could use the quadratic formula. Now, you can do whatever you want here. You can really do whatever you want. Why don't, for practice sake, we use the quadratic formula? So, what that says is that x is equal to minus b plus minus the square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And what are a, b, and c? a, b, and c are the numbers in front of each term here. So a is the one in front of x squared, b is the one in front of x, and then c is everything on the end. So what that is going to give me, in my case, is going to be what? It's going to be, well, minus b, so minus 7, plus minus the square root of b squared, so 7 squared, minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is minus 60. All of that's going to be divided by 2a, which is 2 times 1, which is 2. Okay, so let's now just, you know what, let's put it all into our calculus. So I'm going to get the calculator out. What I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to do the plus version. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a big fraction and then I'm going to do minus 7 plus the square root of 7 squared minus 4 times 1 times minus 60. And then all of that over 2. And I get 5. Now... Remember, this plus minus means that there are two solutions here. But I don't have to type everything in again. Because I've just done all of that working, if I press up on my calculator, it's going to get me back up into the working. What I can do now is just find that bit. So keep pressing left. And then, just the bit before the square root, get that plus, delete that, and just swap it for a minus. And then the second value I get here is minus 12. So I get two values for x. So usually in the question where you kind of know you're looking for one answer, always look for some kind of context that is going to give you, it's going to let you kind of discount one of the answers. So in this case, what is x? x is the number of purple counters in a bag. Can I have minus 12 purple counters in a bag? No, I can't. So I know that the only viable solution in this case is x equals 5. Okay, so that was probability, but with a big tinge of luck, this is why algebra is useful. So if you're still a bit kind of, mm, what's going on on there, head on over to AI Tutor for a full course, and you're also going to get a full work solution to this question as well. We'll see you in the next episode where we go over, I've not quite decided yet. See you then.